In this conversation, I want to talk about the technology and infrastructure you need to make big data work in your organization. And I am here in, uh, in London at IBM South Bank. I'm here with Ivo Kerner. You are the, the vice president for systems at IBM. And you work with lots of clients on their data projects. And hopefully we can explore this in a bit more detail. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, always a pleasure. Um, so, data has become the, the new oil, the, the fuel for this new fourth industrial revolution. We are now generating more data than ever before. Um, companies are now seeing data as a, a true business asset that is driving things like artificial intelligence. So, what are some other key considerations in terms of technology and tech infrastructure that and, and systems that, that that companies need to think about when they want to go on on this big data mm. journey and mm. ask, become serious about how they use data yeah so uh, let's say first of all um, I think it's a, it's a very good uh, change in the marketplace for all let's say vendors and providers who uh, who have uh, data storage products in the portfolio because it's a Let's say companies never stop collecting more data, yeah. And I think that's the first, let's say, that's the first thing that that you really need to think about. Let's say what data you want to collect and what data you think is not going to have any value for you in the future. That's a principle that you need to somehow establish in your company. And and this is what I work with. This is what I do for companies. I, I help them develop data strategies, and one of the biggest challenges is actually figuring out what data you need. Because in some companies they don't have enough data, other companies fall into or they get tempted by just storing everything, everything. which I also think is really not a great yeah. great place to start. And uh, I, I fully agree. Uh, that it, it's a difficult uh, it's a difficult decision yeah, because you don't know exactly what data you will need exactly. in the future. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, if you let's say delete it or throw it away once, you cannot recover it uh, in uh, in in the f in, in the future. Yeah. So uh, let's say my my I don't want to say advice, but uh, the approach that uh, that usually I discuss with clients is you rather store more and say collect more data than uh, too little. Mm -hmm. Yeah, deleting is easier than uh, recreating it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you rather uh, store more data and uh, and collect and archive more data. And uh, I think modern technologies are becoming so cost efficient that uh, at the end of the day, if you store another terabyte or two or even a petabyte, it's not such a big cost problem. Mm. The problem is how you make it accessible and how you manage it. Because uh, <coughs> at the end of the day, um, when, you, when you collect all those data, sometimes it's difficult to remember or know what you have. Mm -hmm. So um, if you if you start at bottom up, yeah, you need first of all think about various technologies. Yeah, um, today you th if you talk about data storage, you talk everyone's talking about flash. Yeah, that's the modern way to store. It's the fastest way to store. It's it's coming very price competitive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we see more and more, and what where we also develop our our uh, offerings, basically everything is today is a flash storage. Yeah, very fast. Very accessible, very reliable, enterprise ready, whatever whatever you need. Uh, but then there's the, the second dimension, and it's a dimension that uh, that uh, never stopped to exist: is how do you archive data that you have in your flash devices? And that's typical. You may not believe it. It's a tape business. It's mm -hmm. it's really you say you save and archive data on tape. And that's what, what also some of the hyperscale computer centers are doing. Yeah? They're still saving data on tape. Mm. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's a, let's say a kind of two-phase strategy that you need to establish. What is the data that you really need in your day-to-day -day life? And what is something you may need in the future, but you're not sure that you're going to use it in the, in, in the short, uh, yeah. short period? So this is, let's say, on a technical level, a first Dif differentiation that yeah. you need to, t uh, to do, yeah. And that make it also very cost, uh, cost mm -hmm. sensitive, yeah. Um, data that you don't use a lot, you put on a, on a tape, it's a very cheap storage. Data that you use on a day-to-day -day base, you put on a, a flash system. Yeah. <coughs> so that, that's, let's say, this layer. Yeah, but then again, yeah, 
um, you need to find a way to really uh, understand what data you collected and what data you have. So you need to have a kind of data management layer about it. Yeah. Uh, second point is you need to think about uh, secondary data usage. Mm. Yeah. So you save data for a special purpose, but you may use it, for example, in test and development environments. Do you have any examples? Um, I'd say there is uh, <coughs> what what we some, sometimes do. We yeah, a technology that's called uh, snapshot copy. Yeah? You basically copy your data that you have. Uh, you take a complete snapshot and you provide it in a test environment. Mm -hmm. So if you develop a new application or a new environment, you take a copy of your production environment, move it to the test environment, and you basically can run your tests in a real data set versus artificially creating something. Yeah? That's, mm. that's one area of secondary data usage. Yeah. Or you, you want to develop a new application that you want to deploy in, in a public cloud. You can take basically a kind of snapshot and move the data that you have on premise into the public cloud environment. Mm. Yeah? So you still have consistency on your on-premise data, but you can use it in a second let's say, second life or secondary way on a diff with a different purpose. Okay. Yeah. So and we need to think about storage and storing it for, for, every, for, for everyday use and then storing the, the, the backup data somewhere yeah. and we try to make this as cost effective as possible. Absolutely. And then we need a, a software layer on top that understands what data we have, where it sits, how to access how it. How to access it and, uh, uh, of course, something you never should forget how you back up and restore it. Mm. Yeah. Never forget backups, never forget it. And again, yeah, that's something you need to think about. What is data that you need to regularly back up? Do you want to have it on-premise? Or you can use a backup system system in the cloud. Yeah. Mm. That's, uh, I think that's important. And then, let's say on top of that, uh, you basically need to add a kind of classical data, data layer. So extraction, transformation, um, increasing the value of the data with external data that you pro, uh, potentially buy. Uh, and that's basically the decision that you then need to take. Do you want to build a data lake? Do you want to be build a kind of data mart for a specific application? And uh, that's various trends uh, that, that uh, you see. Yeah? There's more and more coming. But at the end of the day, it's still provided that they, it's still fed by the data you collected and built in your production environment, yeah, mm. that's, that's the main data that uh, I think you will use in the mm. future. Yeah, and what I see in practice is again, lots of organizations have lots of different legacy systems, different they have old systems, they have, have ERP systems where they store some data, so would you recommend pulling all of this into an, a, a data lake or a data layer that is accessible? Um, I, let's say there was... <laughs> I don't want to say that's a kind of religious discussion. Yeah. I don't know how long the discussion is between data warehouse, data marts, and we call it data lake something. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a very interesting trend, yeah, and it's always uh, moving from one side to the other. Um, my personal opinion is I think um, you need to build a kind of uh, general, not a general purpose data warehouse, data lake. Yeah. I think it always uh, should support the op the project the business that you want uh, let's say to help with mm. the data um, I don't think that a general super big data lake uh, you can keep consistent for for a long time yeah. and I completely agree with you there um, just next door to us is, is Shell and I've I've designed Shell's data strategy and one of the things we did there is we we said we need a, a, a data lake but we have to be very careful what goes into the data lake yes. there has to be a very clear business case yes. for every data point we are pulling into this so I completely agree absolutely and uh, the experience that, that uh, let's say I have is the bigger you create a data lake and the, let's say the more pur purpose you want to get into that it's getting too complex and you never start mm, yeah. exactly and uh, I rather would start with a let's say first business process with the first decision system that you want to build, whatever you, you try, start with that and then enrich it slightly, but never start generating and architecting this enterprise-wide data lake. Very good. Thank you very much, Ivo. Some very solid advice there.